Hey, it's Patty. So I'm cooking um, a whole bunch of stuff today. And um, for one of my clients wanted um, tips on how to prep. And I was like, well, I'll just do my prep and I'll film it and then um, kind of show you what it is. So I'm gonna show a lot of things on how to prep and it's not edited and it's not all fancy because I don't do it all fancy. Um, but I ended up with a whole lot of food. So I'm gonna flip this around. I end, if I can figure it out. Okay, so I finished up some zucchini with some herbs and squash and mushrooms and onions and tomatoes. Also some green beans with almonds. Uh, my, my son doesn't like it with onions, so I put those on the side. And what else? I'm finishing up some cauliflower that has some leftover pesto. So a lot of things I do are, ah, this is leftover, let's throw that in there. Let's see, we had salmon for lunch, so I cooked extra pieces, so I'll have that during the week. And that's some of the pesto that was left over. Tons of onions, I always cook lots of onions and have them so I can add them to vegetables. I have root vegetables, I might make that into a soup, I'm not sure. And then a medley of, um, this was just at the store. It was uh, carrots and onions and celery, and I cooked it down. And then some asparagus in the back. What's that? Oh, oh, Brussels sprouts are so good. And then I have other vegetables that I'll use throughout the week. Okay, the prep. There are a few things you're going to need before you get started. You'll need a cutting board, a knife or two, a dish towel, Lots and lots of containers for things. Um, I can't emphasize how much you are going to need containers for things. I use bowls, I use jars, I use all sorts of things. Uh, salt and pepper for seasoning, coconut oil, and then optional for your baking sheets, aluminum foil or parchment paper. I like to use it because that way I don't have to clean up as much and I use the same pan over and over. So your next step is to get everything out. Do not put anything in the fridge because if you do, you'll start watching Netflix and you're not going to do this. So I put everything out and I just wash it all. And then I have a place for things to go. I wash, I put it in. Um, I leave things in the bag. I don't even take it out to wash it. And if anything says that it's pre-washed, I completely believe them at the store. Um, I'm not going to get freaked out about rewashing everything because I don't have a lot of time for that. So let's talk about the oven. 400 degrees the whole time. Your hard root vegetables are going to take about 30 minutes and the softer vegetables about 15. This is all an estimate. It just depends. You're going to be checking the whole time, but that's just a good place to kind of set your timer. Let's get started with spaghetti squash. Okay, first I've cut it, I have taken all the seeds out and I'm rubbing coconut oil all inside it. I just grab a little coconut oil. I totally use my hands so much when I do all of this. Um, you know, I just keep them clean. And then I grab a little salt, I grab a little pepper. Start with the salt first because you end up with pepper flakes in your salt. I have learned that from experience. Flip it over. You're going to then put it in the oven and leave it there for um, 30 minutes. Okay, so when you get the spaghetti squash out of the oven, you just put it on the cutting board and grab a fork and just start raking it across it. It's like magic. It turns into this like vegetable spaghetti. And um, I don't season it a lot right now because I never know what I'm gonna do with it. I treat it just like spaghetti. I could add red sauce, I could add pesto, I could add an Alfredo sauce, I could add lots of things, um, but you know, I'm just going to wait. And I make sure I have a container and I just put it in that container and um, throw it in the fridge. Okay, so full disclosure, um, I cut open the spaghetti squash and did all of the scooping and everything and threw it in the oven before I jumped in the shower after yoga. It takes 30 minutes, so I thought, let's go ahead and do it. Um, and now once I am out of yoga and <laughs> or out of the shower, I um, take the stuff that's in the container because I don't need to chop it or anything and I throw it on the pan. Uh, same thing, get a little coconut oil, melt it, toss it on there, salt, 
pepper, nothing else. I throw it in the oven. Um, there was something else that I got that were um, some root vegetables. They already have some spices on them and I normally don't put any extra spices because I like to do that once I'm reusing these vegetables, but it was just already done and it was quick and easy. So, you know, anything to save some time. Okay, so here's a magic trick I wanna show you. You're gonna get a dish towel and you're gonna wet it and get it just damp. And then you're gonna open it up and put it on your counter and you're gonna put your cutting board on top of it. And it's a nasty stained up dish towel, I don't care. My cutting board doesn't slip. It is like a magic trick. And then every time I cut, my knife doesn't slip and it all works perfectly. So I'm gonna get a big old knife and cut up some onions. Now onions I use, uh, I, I prep these every week and I just keep them in the refrigerator. I add them to omelets, I add them to other vegetables. It's just a really big punch of flavor. So I cut the ends off the onions and I'm gonna tell you my knife skills are not great. And it's just proof that you don't have to be like a big fancy chef. And I mean, I, should, I probably should take a class in how to use a knife, but. I just do the best I can and keep my fingers out of the way. So I cut up the onions and I'm doing two yellow ones and one red one. I keep them separate, but um, after I cut them up, I just put them in a bowl. Okay, so the one thing that I don't do in the oven, I do on the stove top, are um, the onions and then anything that could just be really flavorful for a soup it was something new that i found at the grocery store um the it was onions and carrots and celery all mixed together so if i'm going to blend a soup i'll just put a few spoonfuls of that in there so the onions i keep onions in my refrigerator that have been sauteed and i love them it's such a time saver i just saute them up you do have to watch them a little bit and if things start to get dry um, i add a little bit of water or chicken stock or if you're a wine drinker you could add some white wine i think that adds a funky flavor but um chicken stock's great or um just vegetable broth and then um just really punches some flavor so cutting up brussels sprouts i do it a couple of ways but um for the most part i just cut the little end off the end that looks like the that was stuck to the big broccoli broccoli brussels sprout stalk so i just cut that off and then throw the brussels sprouts in a bowl and if they're huge, I might cut them in half, but for the most part, I'm just like cutting away and just like um, cutting that thing off. Now, sometimes a huge knife is just too much for me and I'm gonna go get a smaller paring knife. It's just easier for me to handle. I mean, you can see right there, I even have scissors that I use to cut things up. So I have kitchen scissors. Um, I'm gonna pause this. And, oh, no, never mind. I'm not gonna pause. There is the little knife. So I'm just using a tiny knife. It's easier. Just make do with whatever you have, but just make sure that you're comfortable and not, you know, slicing off your fingers. We don't need that protein in our vegetables. So whatever you can handle. And there are also great YouTube videos to show you how to use a knife much better than I do. It might be worth looking at some of those. I don't know. I, I kind of get through it and I... The more you do it, the better you get. Okay, so once these Brussels sprouts are cut and trimmed, I'm going to toss them with coconut oil, salt, and pepper. And I'm also going to add some walnuts just because I like that flavor. Throw them in a pan, 400 degrees. They're a hard vegetable, so about 30 minutes. I set my timer for 30 minutes, and at the end of that, they should be done. Okay, so once the root vegetables are done, I just pull up the foil, throw it into a container, and then I use the same foil again. I'm gonna use it for chopping up my zucchini, or use the same foil, and after I've chopped up my zucchini and my tomatoes, I'm just gonna throw it right on there because since I haven't added any funky, uh, not funky, but you know, any herbs or spices or anything, it's just a salt and pepper flavor, I can reuse that foil. 
So slice up, again, I don't have the best knife skills, so I just do little circles when I slice things up. You can do whatever works for you. Um, you can buy these pre-sliced if you want to. The tomatoes, you wanna slice or poke so they don't explode in the oven. And then, um, yeah, again, just a little bit of coconut oil or um, you know another good solid oil and then just salt and pepper. There's a photo of like it in the oven and at the end I throw spinach and mushrooms on it which adds a really nice little punt. Okay so I think I got new foil but um, I've gone to soft vegetables so just like the zucchini and the squash this is going to be about 15 minutes in the oven. These are the green beans. My son doesn't like onions so I only add onions on one half of it. I think I also added some almonds. Oh yeah I added a little bit of sliced almonds because I just like that crunch. Um, now a little bit about oil. I, I know I keep talking about coconut oil when you cook it just holds up so well in the oven and I am not a fan of canola or vegetable oil which is a topic for another day. But if you do like the flavor of olive oil, save that and use really good olive oil and drizzle it on top at the end. I know this isn't like making sense with the video that I'm showing but I think you gotta get the picture that I'm sprinkling almonds so once I throw that in the oven and start pulling other things out that's when I really start adding the flavors and layering flavors I just think it's a much nicer way and also I'm less likely to burn olive oil and burn herbs and burn those things <laughs> and it's just easy if you put things in the oven again with just salt pepper and some coconut oil it just holds up really well um, now you can see I'm putting the onions just kind of on the side because some of us like onions and some of us don't so I'm gonna pop that in the oven I usually have two pans going at once this one's for 15 minutes. Okay, next salmon. Um, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to brag on this. People love my salmon and it's so easy. I buy the fattiest salmon I can at Whole Foods, preferably wild, but just a really good quality. I like it fatty. I always ask them for that. I have them slice it. I get double the amount that my family likes to eat. So if we're going to eat three slices, I get six slices. I put it on parchment paper directly on there. Um, I don't use foil for this. Salt and pepper it. If it's a little dry, I'll add a little coconut oil and drizzle it on there. You, I just don't think you can get your fish fatty enough. So you can see I have um, the pieces. I stack them. I alternate the larger part to the smaller part. I'm not sure why. I just feel like it cooks more evenly. I'm going to salt it. I'm going to pepper it. Um, and that's really the only spice that I put on it. I've tried adding like basil and the lemon and some things to kind of punch it up. And honestly, people just don't like it as much. It's better if I add those things afterwards. Um, so again, you can see I'm just salting it and then I'm going to pepper it. Nothing too fancy. Oh, again, always do the salt first so you don't end up with like black specks in your salt and then I'm gonna flip it over so I flip each one of these over and I cook it skin side up for start checking at 10 minutes at 400 degrees nothing else in the oven I salt and pepper the skin too I don't know why but I always have and who knows um, so that's it the, the key is to not overcook it so as soon as you see that it starts looking done pull it out so that's kind of what I do. And you know, I, I, do I have to run to the store and get things in the middle of it? Yeah, it's not perfect. I just, um, you know, I just try to cook a lot of things and have them on hand. And then don't worry about making every meal a gourmet meal. When I, since I'm going to massage school and um, I'm commuting, I'm trying to take my lunch. It's not always easy, but you know, if I have vegetables and I just throw vegetables and quinoa and some tofu or some salmon, I mean, it's fine. It's, you know, it gets me through the day and I don't have to, you know, get a slice of pizza or whatever else is fast. So I hope this helps. I hope that, you know, my gosh, if you have any tips on how to prep it or better, please let me know. And one other thing that I forgot, there was a spaghetti squash that I made. And um, once we tasted it, it was kind of rotten. <laughs> it didn't taste good. 
So I think that just don't be afraid to cook something and throw it out. Like, you know, what's the worst? It, that probably cost me about $3. And, you know, it happens. I think that if you don't, like, play around with food and cook and have some fun with it and be willing to toss it if it's not great or if you mess it up or if you add too much salt, it's not the end of the world. And, you know, it's so much better for you and you're going to save so much money instead of going out all the time that it's really worth the risk of kind of screwing up every once in a while. So um, I'm going to go enjoy all the food I cooked.